We're now going to examine members that will carry a torque. Uh, this is most easily seen in a shaft of a motor or a drivetrain, or perhaps a drilling rig. Civil structural members also carry torques, but they're rarely circular or tubular in cross-section. In this initial examination, we're going to limit our consideration to members that have a circular or tubular cross-section. And so we're going to be looking principally at things that look like shafts. So remember from statics that a torque is a moment that tends to twist a member about its longitudinal axis. To be able to visualize the effect of torsion on a straight circular shaft like we have here, let us consider a highly elastic and deformable bar like rubber. And that way we'll be able to see, visibly see, what's going on uh, with the shaft as it twists. We'll draw a series of longitudinal straight lines on the rod, as well as circumferential rod, uh, lines to see what happens after the torque is applied. When the torque is applied, a constant torque over the shown section of the rod, the rod deforms as we can see here in the second diagram. By inspection, we can see a number of things. And this is one of those times where I would normally try to draw you out to get you to observe what you see and to try to connect you with how the scientists and the engineers that first studied these things had to look at observation and then interpret it. So what do we see? Well, the first thing we see uh, is that the circular lines still are circular. Uh, they, they haven't changed. They're, they're not bulging out, they're still lined up. If you were to cut a cross section along one of those circular lines, you would still cut in the same spot after the, the twisting had occurred. The longitudinal lines, on the other hand, uh, which form the grid, twist into a helix uh, that intersect the circles at equal angles everywhere along it. And so you have these regular uh, um, angle of twist uh, as you are moving away from the support. Note that the cross section at the end of the shaft remains flat. That is, it doesn't, doesn't warp or bulge. Remember what we were saying, that if you were to cut a plane along those circular lines that we drew, they, they would still cut in exactly the same spot uh, before and after the twisting. Let's look a little bit closer at what the shape of these individual squares or rectangles before the twisting look like after. So here we see a rubber bar before and after it is torqued. And you see how the shape of that square changes. That's the same as any of these squares that are inscribed by these circular lines and longitudinal lines. It changes into that shape. Where have we seen that shape before? We, we've recently looked at that shape. And if you are thinking about what we saw for shear stress and shear strain, you're absolutely right. And that should start to get us thinking about what kind of stresses occur as a result of torsion. So quickly go back to statics. Uh, we want to consider internal torques. Whenever we're looking at stresses and strains, we're not considering the external torques applied. Those internal torques applied have to be uh, used to derive the internal torques using what we've learned in statics uh, in order to determine both their effect, angle of twist, uh, or the stresses associated with it. So we will do exactly the same thing. We're going to do our free body diagram, do a method of sections, throw away part of the uh, uh, structure and look at what internal forces, in this case, internal torque is required to uh, maintain equilibrium. And the formula that we do is we'll call it for this simple one dimensional bar, a sum of the torques about its longitudinal axis must be equal to zero. We can see here that the torque between A and B uh, plus the 10 Newton meters plus the uh, minus the 30 Newton meters has to be equal to zero. And we can solve for the torque between A, B to be 20 Newton meters. It is pretty much identical to what we did with uh, uniaxially uh, loaded rods. So let's get started with a little bit of practice. So we have done up this problem. It's available you, to be done. Uh, what we want to do is to use the method of sections and to draw the torque force diagram. Like the axial force diagram, the torque force diagram is simply a graph 
uh, that shows what the internal torque is across the length of the rod. So we've done it up a couple times. We've done it using a deliberate method of sections as well as the graphical method for you to practice with.